Welcome to Europe War 2011. Advanced technology, your access to the future. The future. At first glance, it might seem elusive. Yet, predicting the future has been an acknowledged activity within living memory. It poses an irresistible attraction. So, the fact that it's a recurring subject in art, literature and film is not surprising at all. I finally invent something that works! The list seems endless. By the beginning of the 15th century, Leonardo da Vinci already drew a helicopter. By the end of the 1800s, Jules Verne caused sensation with stories about submarines and space travel. And more recent, books like 1984 by George Orwell and films like 2001, A Space Odyssey by Stanley Kubrick have sometimes proved to be surprisingly accurate. But also in science, looking towards the future is far from taboo. Governments and corporations produce an endless stream of predictions to make strategic decisions. And even consumers are used to calculate what's still to come. How long does it take for the crisis to be over with? And does it make me buy that new car or not? Consumer confidence, a prediction of the future by ordinary people, is regarded an important economic value these days. Partly, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. Because if no one would have faith in the years ahead, no one would buy a new car. It kind of illustrates that the future is not only something we just come across, we can also influence it. At least, that's a strong belief cherished by the American academic John M. Richardson, one of the founders of global modeling. When it comes to the future, there are three kinds of people. Those who let it happen, those who make it happen, and those who wonder what happens. You, without a doubt, belong to that second category. People who will shape our future, who will model it. You're with those who make it happen. And that's why we'd like to take you on a journey, 30 years ahead. A journey to the year 2041, a maritime odyssey. It's hard to say what the world will look like in exactly 30 years' time, but we do know a lot about the years to come. We can be sure that by the year 2015, sulfur limits for ship fuels will be reduced significantly, that transportation over water will keep growing in the coming years, that the construction of enormous offshore windmill parks will assume large proportions, that the fishery industry will have to deal with even stricter regulations, and that offshore drilling for fossil fuels and deep sea mining will take place even in areas that are difficult to access. On top of that, there are three obvious global trends that appear in all scenarios for the decades ahead. A diversion of political and economical power eastwards, and a transformation of the Netherlands and other Western European countries to knowledge economies. Becoming a part of the industrial infrastructure of Europe and the United States, that's a very important strategy of the Chinese. The Chinese economy in 2041 will be as knowledge intensive, I think, as the European economy. Climate change and an increasing demand for water and food. Everyone expects high oil prices because of the scarcity of oil in the future. In all scenarios, sustainability plays a very important role. Sustainability and the impact on shipping, for instance. The increasing importance of technology. Technology was very important in the past, will be very important in the future, especially breakthrough technology. There will be breakthrough technology in 2041. What will the maritime world be like in 2041 based on these three trends? Not cheap labor will be leading, but innovation. The combination of innovation and entrepreneurship, the courage to invest and the courage to start or develop businesses. That will determine whether we as a country will still be leading economically in the decades to come. We must be innovative all the time now and within a period of 30 years. And that means that uh, we have to look to niches in the markets. We will not play a leading role in large container ships or whatever new system might be in existence by 2031. 
but we will still be the strong leaders in the, the niche markets we have chosen. Not speed will be leading, but sustainability. Speed actually now at this moment is one of the ways to limit your pollution, to limit the use of oil. But in the future, if there are perhaps new ways of making energy, then speed is no issue anymore. I think there could be uh, uh, zero uh, emission ships by 2041, which will be absolutely necessary in view of the environmental issues uh, which are there. But I still think that in 2041 there will be a vivid offshore industry still active for oil and gas production. In 2041, not human strength will be leading, but smart technology. There will be smart ships. Are we able, with the intelligent use of IT systems, to further integrate safety, uh, maintenance, uh, coordination of all the functions of the vessel, which might lead to a reduction of crew members for certain type of uh, vessels. It is a development that must be supported strongly because there is an enormous lack of personnel in our industry now already. But in the future, with the growing uh, trade and the growing population, I think that will be a severe problem. It indeed will not be human strength, it will be technology who is leading the world. When it comes to the future, there are three kinds of people. Those who let it happen, those who make it happen, and those who wonder what happens. You establish the future of the maritime industry. You are the future. 2041, a maritime odyssey. Your odyssey.